we are now ready for question number three. Ready for Smiling Sam Simpson, who's decided to run for a seat in the Kansas legislature. And he needs to make some campaign posters to put up. He has determined the posters must contain 50 square inches of printed material with margins of 4 inches at the top and bottom and 2 inches on the side. We're going to go ahead and fill those in. We know we have to have 4 inch top and bottom margins. And 2 inches on the side. We know the printed area has to be 50 square inches on the inside there. He wants us to figure out what's the overall dimensions of the poster. In other words, what side paper should he be printing these posters on? But he wants, to, of course, to be environmentally conservative and use as little paper as possible. So how, when I talk about how using a little amount of paper, what's that mean? Well, the least amount of paper would be the least area of paper. So once again, it's still an area problem. We just need to figure out how to minimize the actual size of the paper. So my question to you here is, where should I label the length and the width? That's what usually causes the biggest problem on this one. Because it seems normal to want to say, well, okay, the outsides are going to be L and W. seems per perfectly reasonable that we would do that. Okay, my problem is though, since that's, if I use that that way, and by the way, don't be copying any of this down, I would come up with areas length times width, no big deal. My question to you is, my so how do I get my second equation? What's the only other thing I know that limits me in size on this? Well, it's the fact that I've got 50 square inches. The 50 square inches is only the area on the inside. So therefore, I would have to have an expression for what the length and width of the inside are. Well, if I do that, I'm going to end up with, if this outer portion is W, and each of the margins is 2 inches, aren't I taking off 4 inches off of W? And same way, if the length is L, and I take 4 inches off each end, I would actually be taking off 8 total inches. Now you can do this. You'll end up with an equation, L minus 8 times W minus 4 equals the 50. You can do it. It's going to make your algebra horrible. Because of the fact that to solve for L or W is going to make us end up with a terrible expression, and then we're going to have to go sub it into the other equation, it's going to be downright ugly. So this is one of those rare instances when it's totally been misleading you. And we did this all backwards. So give me a second and we'll undo this thing. Here's some more. Maybe. I don't know why I'm not going back any farther. All right, I'll take the rest off myself. I don't want the L, I don't want the W. Since I know the 50 inches on the inside, the best way to do this is to put the L and W on the inside. That way you can say your equation over here is L times W equals 50. Nice, sweet, and simple. It'll be easy to solve. So then I need some way to represent the dimensions of the outside. So how am I going to get the outside? Well, yeah, fairly simply. W here is adding 2 inches to each end, so it would be W plus 4 on the outside. The length was adding 8 inches, 4 and 4, so you'd have the length plus 8. And if I want to write an area equation then, I would have L plus 8 times W plus 4. There are my two equations. Now, which one would you like to solve for? Well, once again, since I have mine worked out, I'm going to go with solving for L again. I like W's in my problem more than I like to write L's. So I'm going to replace L here with 50 over W plus 8, W plus 4. Now, do you think I want to leave it in that form, or do I want to foil it together? You could do that. You'd have to do product rule. I say foil it together. First will get me just 50, because the W's will cancel. 
Outsides will be 200 over W. Insides are 8W and lasts are 32. Notice you can combine 50 and 32 and get 82. And that would be my simplified formula all in one variable, so that's my original function. Okay, you need to set an interval. If you were paying attention to me, you're going, ah, snap of an interval, no problem whatsoever. It's two variables multiplied equal to a number. We got L times W equals 50. That means immediately my interval is a zero to infinity interval. So that will make things considerably quicker. Now that we have that done, I'm going to speed up here a little bit because I want to give you a couple hints about the last problem. I just have to do the derivative of this. Derivative 82 is gone. 200 over W is 200 W to the negative 1. So I'll actually get negative 200 W to the negative 2, which I'm dropping back to the bottom. And then, of course, plus 8. I need to set this equal to 0 and solve it. So once again, I'm going to leave 8 over here on the left and move over the positive, so the positive 200 over W squared. If I times by W squared to get rid of the fraction, I will have 8W squared equals 200 which means if I come on up over here, I got W squared equals 25, and therefore W equals technically plus or minus 5, but A, you can't have a negative width, that doesn't make sense. B is not in the interval, so it's not a possible answer. Just positive 5. Now, how do I check and verify that this is indeed going to give me the minimum area I'm looking for. Well, since once again my interval has parentheses on it, yep, it's the land of limits. And so I will have my original function. If I put 0 in there, I'll get 82 plus 200 over W the number over zero, check the one-sided limit, it'll end up being infinity plus zero, so once again we get infinity. If I approach infinity of my function, I'll get 82 plus 200 over infinity goes to zero. But 8 times infinity goes to infinity, and so I also get infinity. Remember, I was trying to minimize the paper. Those infinities indicate we have no maximum, so life is good. All we need is for our critical point to come in something less than infinity. And so if I stick my 5 in the original function, you'll discover that I get 162. Now, that's under infinity, so yes, that is our minimum value. What does 162 mean? Well, you just shoved it in an area function. So therefore, that's the area. This, this poster will have 162 square inches of area. Our question, once again, though, was what dimensions will he need? So we need to go find the length. Well, we know up here, length was 50 over W. So if I do 50 divided by 5, the length must be 10. Now, be very, very careful here when writing your final answer. You will notice that L and W were the inside. We need the dimensions of the outside area. So the outside area, the length was actually supposed to be L plus 8. So if I do L plus 8, I'll have 18 inches. And the outside width was supposed to be W plus 4. So in our case, the width 5 plus 4, that would be 9 inches. So we really should have paper here that's 18 inches by 9 inches in order to minimize the amount of paper he uses. Congratulations. You've done another area problem. That one has a sneaky point of you have to look out for where to put your variables.
it's typically those kinds of problems that do that. Um, I want to also help you set up the last couple here, problems four and five. These are, in my opinion, much simpler because they give you all the information. These are not area and volume problems. These are what I call business problems. And you actually know quite a bit about this already. When you do the business problem, in case of number four, we've got a toy manufacturer that knows that the cost to make his toys is given by the equation 600 plus 3x. Notice it says to make x thousands of toys. That means if we get x to be 1, that means we should make 1,000 toys. So we know cost. They also tell us the function for revenue is r of x equals 4x minus 0.0002x squared. We know when he begins production, he has to make at least 1,000 toys, but he can make no more than 10 million toys. And we need to find the optimum number of toys to produce and sell that maximize the keyword profit. We are maximizing profit. So the question is, how do you find profit if they give you revenue and cost? Revenue is how much money you take into your cash register. Cost is how much it costs you to produce what you're selling. So logically that says then that you need to do revenue minus cost is always the profit formula. So in our case, since they gave us revenue and cost, this becomes really easy. We simply need to take the revenue function and subtract the cost function. Now why am I doing parentheses? So I'll remember to distribute my negative signs and not make simple algebra errors. So I would, I would distribute that. Come up with a profit equation. 4x minus 3x will be 1x. We'll have a minus 0.002x squared and a minus 600. Okay, notice. Do I need a second equation? And no, I don't. This is all one variable, so you don't have to have a second equation. Now, however, since you don't have a second equation, how on earth do you come up with an interval? Well, they have to give you information, or you have to use common sense. In this case, they gave us information. It said when he begins production, he has to make at least 1,000 toys. Okay, remember, X represents 1,000. So that means the minimum amount of toys he can make is 1 in our case, because 1 represents 1,000. And on the same token, I can go with, he, he can make 10 million toys, take off three zeros for the thousands, and it would actually be 1 to 10,000 then would be my interval. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and solve this, but my question is, after you find your critical point and your, you've got your interval, you get the critical point, how did we test to figure out the maximums and minimums? We had brackets. Well, we did it with a t-table, which really doesn't work here. What you need to do is see which one gives you the highest profit. So you're going to need to put 1 in your profit equation. You're going to need to put in your critical point. And you're going to need to put in the 10,000. And you are simply looking for, in this case, which one comes out the biggest. Whichever one comes out the biggest, that's your maximum. Okay, on question five, I want to also give you a quick hint on how to set that up. This gas station is selling X gallons of fuel per month. It has fixed cost of 2500 and variable cost of $0.90. Cents. What that means when they talk fixed and variable means they're going to pay a flat 2500 every month regardless, plus $0.90 cents per gallon. This is obviously an old problem because it's way more expensive than that. <coughs> <coughs> They're giving you something here a little different, which is price. And the price equation is a dollar fifty minus point zero 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 two x. And I'm going to run out of here this by about one minute, so I'm going to stop it real quick and come back and finish this one problem for about a minute.